Thank you for your interest in the Society of Critical Care Medicine's guidelines for family-centered care in the ICU. The purpose of this video is to walk you through an instrument called a gap analysis tool that was created with the guidelines and that is available for free download from the SCCM website. It is meant to help you rapidly develop a bundle of specific recommendations to enhance family-centered care that is tailored to the exact needs of the ICU in which you work. Before using this tool, if you haven't done so already, we recommend that you read the guidelines themselves, which are available on the SCCM website and in the journal Critical Care Medicine. Once you have familiarized yourself with the guidelines, you can download the gap analysis tool from the SCCM website and open it using Microsoft Excel. When you open the spreadsheet, you should see two worksheets, the first labeled Step 1, Gap Analysis, and the second labeled Step 2, Prioritization Matrix. If you see a yellow bar at the top of your screen labeled Protected View, please click on the button labeled Enable Editing so that you can use the spreadsheet. The first worksheet contains a full list of all 24 recommendations in the Family-Centered Care Guidelines. To use the worksheet, simply read each recommendation one by one, and for each recommendation, in the column labeled Frequency, use the pre-programmed drop-down menu to indicate how frequently your ICU already implements the recommendation in its standard workflow and culture. For each item, you have four choices to select from, ranging from nearly always to nearly never. Note that for some of the items that apply only to the neonatal ICUs, a not applicable option is available if you do not work in a neonatal ICU. We will fill out the first five items in this worksheet as an example, but we encourage you to fill out the questionnaire for all 24 items. Once you have completed the questionnaire, you will notice that each recommendation now has an item score and item rank. The item score is a weighted score from 0 to 50 that factors in both the frequency of implementation that you entered as well as the importance of the particular outcome for families and clinicians that the recommendation addresses. Higher scores are assigned to recommendations with more important outcomes that your unit is not already currently doing frequently. If you'd like an exact explanation as to how the score is calculated, you can hover your cursor over the headers of the columns in this worksheet. The item rank assigned to each item simply puts each recommendation in order from most in need of change to least in need of change. The item most in need of change, based on the item score, is assigned 1, the next highest item score is assigned 2, and so on. Once you have completed all 25 items, you can move on to the second worksheet labeled Step 2, Prioritization Matrix. Here you will find the top five recommendations from your first worksheet based on item rank and item score. They are already populated into the worksheet in the first three columns. Of note, you may have more than five items listed with scores if you had multiple recommendations that happen to have the same calculated item score. You can now print out the second worksheet or project it during an ICU team meeting to facilitate discussion. For each of your five recommendations, the spreadsheet asks three questions. First, how does your ICU differ from the guideline recommendation? Second, what are the barriers to implementing the guideline recommendation? Several common barriers are suggested here to consider in checklist form, but there may be others that you and your team may consider. Finally, the last column of the spreadsheet asks you to re-rank the listed recommendations in order of your group's priorities for pursuing change based on your consideration of what is pressing and practical in your ICU. Again, the purpose of this tool is to help you develop a practical bundle of specific recommendations to enhance family-centered care that is tailored to your local ICU environment. Thanks so much for your interest in the guidelines and in this tool. 
Both the writing group of the Family Centered Care Guidelines and the Patient and Family Support Committee hope that you find this tool useful. Please feel free to get in touch with us with questions.